Hi, I'm Rob Turner. I'm the creator slash writer of Reynard City and Reynard City Chronicles. You can find us via Twitter, uh, twitter.com for slash Reynard City. Our main website is reynardcitychronicles.com. And if you go on YouTube, you can find us via Reynard City Update Channel. You're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by a returning guest. He hasn't been on the show since last year, but it feels like forever, in my opinion, because he's such an amazing person and very talented one at that. We are joined by the ever-talented and calm creator of Reynard City Chronicles. Rob Turner, how are you doing today? Hello. <laughs> Welcome hey, back. Hey, hey, no, it's good, it's good to see you again, Kurt. You sent no request to be interviewed on the show as one does for Two Geeks Talking. And you hinted at a couple of different things, which I'll let you tell. But for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and, of course, what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. I decided to sort of do this a bit differently, so I will physically show you what I, I got out from the cupboard. So this is Brain Art City Chronicles. And so as well as being something that you can purchase online in digital form, it does exist physically as well. It's about three superhero foxes come to Earth to stop an evil robot fox. We've got AK Girl, the psychic vixen whose weakness is she inflates on contact with Caramel. One the vixen who is like this beauty queen but the like a dark secret. And uh, Guillermo, her boyfriend, who's... Dad created Mega Fox, the evil villain that they're all up against. And there's five issues so far, and um, I'll just briefly show you the other five. This is a quick rattle through. You can always kind of talk about these more specifically in a bit, but mm -hmm. so I'm kind of enjoying this make, making a lot of noise. Um, there we go. I'll give you another one there. Yeah. There we go. You weren't expecting show and tell, were you? <laughs> no, I never am usually. You've been doing this series for a long time. Why do you keep coming back to it? What drives you to keep creating such amazing stories and characters? Wow. I mean, that is a fair question. And I think the best way I can say is like when you get reactions from people. So, for example, Ellie Renard de Lyle La Fortune, which incidentally, awesome name. He works partially on issue five and is working on issue six as well. And he said to me, like, before we started work, and I swear, this is what he actually said. I'm not just thinking, thinking this up. He said, like, this is like working on a Marvel movie. And when someone reacts like that about something that you made the story for, and then, like, they do this, like, really awesome... Actually, I'll show you the... So this is, like, Ellie's artwork just here. And they do this art for you, and they create this thing. For me, I just really want to finish off this story. This is a story I love working on. It's a bit like, say, like... Kermit in the Muppet movie it's like it's not just your dream it's a dream you get to like share with all these incredible people and it just makes it more real it's awesome I love it milestones in comics are always wonderful to have but milestones in life are also wonderful to have as well but what milestones have have occurred in your life more recently here in order to say this I will quote a film title this is 40 I am now 40 years old <laughs> congratulations you made it <laughs> yes still alive yeah that's something <laughs> So what are you doing for your big uh, big four zero? Are you are you shutting down the pubs at four a.m. or what's what's happening there? What I can tell you is we are going to be going out around Norwich. The first place we're going to is this lovely cafe I know called the, the Hashery. Some folks who've seen my Instagram will have seen some pictures of this. We're going to have like a little party. But the thing is, as well as just being a nice thing with friends, it's also going to be a little tie-in where. We make this big announcement, which I could actually share with you. Ooh, exclusive. Ooh. I love it. Oh, yes. So there is an artist that people, and again, you kind of expect me to say things like this, like, oh, you know, the fans love this kind of thing. I have a people like, oh, when are you going to get like such and such artist back? I had a chat with him. And one sort of fan favorite issue is by the artist Jeff Soriano. Mm -hmm. And I can safely say we are going to be doing a special in addition to Rainbow City Chronicles, print version of Alternatron, which is a fan, which is a fan favorite. It is, I just, I think if you can see from this artwork here, yeah. which I think is absolutely Beautiful. phenomenal. One that, I mean, to be fair, I, I love this one as well. We originally did this as a time with the Edinburgh Fringe, but we thought like it'd be nice to do a limited edition with this one. So you will be able to get this from our Kofi shop, and. 
We're also going to do like some tie in stuff. So you'll be able to get like this plus an extra gift. And depending on when you when you get it, because to be honest, it depends on how many supplies we get. I also got this from Sapphire, which is another favorite, which is Warp King Mystery Chalk. Oh, wow. So this is from a local chocolate supplier called Sapphire, S A W F I R E. And there is actually like video online, like someone doing a taste test of this. And the cool thing with this is it looks like it should be a certain flavor, but it's actually a different one. And it is so much fun like that. It's particular fun getting that with somebody and seeing if they can guess the flavor. And like, even if you give hints, like I've seen some people like the range of guesses we had for them, watermelon, ice cream, bubble gum, so many different guesses. I asked my older brother to guess. He actually was very smart and he actually got it. And so that was a bit annoying. <laughs> Taste test experience in, in life, so I guess. Fun. Yeah. Better than, than, than 20 questions. What flavor is this? There you go. Exactly. Well, well, I mean, this is what we're planning to do. So we're going to have a, like a little, um, you know, basically it's going to be like an update to the, um, like the gift bags we used to get like coming out of the kids' yeah. party and also like a lucky dip of some stuff from some people like, who sell the comics. So there's going to be some stuff from Canary Comics. But Bugs and Dragon Tales, who actually they got in the news last year because Russell Crowe donated to their crowdfunder. So that was kind of cool. You know, which I was so chuffed for them because like I said, they're, they're one of like, three shops that sort of sell our comic and you know getting support from them has been awesome that's one thing i i love about your presence online not only you're an amazing creative person with reynard city you're always up for helping and supporting other people and i think that's needed more than ever in today's society i love your your follow fridays i love your promotion I can't thank you enough for sharing uh, my content and my interviews as well too you're just such a great influence and, and a positive change well, I, think, I think it is important because I think when you've got like a range of people working on the project and like I'll forget people ask me like oh do you do the art yourself so I, I often like it's a practical thing as much as anything because you want to hammer at home that this is a project that involves all these different people and I want people to know that all these different people are part of it and also I think the thing that I like doing with the Fire Friday thing is that, you know, you let people know, like, these are people that I like. These are people who I interact with. These are fun, interesting people that kind of give you a bit of added funds. You know, the really cool sort of comic people like Dan Butcher and Susie Gander, who I absolutely love. But equally, there's Adventures of Lollipop with her, like, educational comics, which I think are absolutely fantastic. And then, like Litterbox Comics and Kendall Collins doing that, like their slice of life stuff. It's, it's wonderful. It's just like a whole ecosystem of interesting people, really. You should uh, change your, your follow Fridays to the ecosystem of interesting people. <laughs> there you go. That see? Hashtag that. that that's awesome. <laughs> this is so interesting people. Love that. You've stayed creative your entire life. You've found your writing style, you found a, a cast of characters you are uh, passionate about that you make interesting in, in your comics. Besides what you just showed us, which is truly incredible for age 40 and for what you're you're doing in the future, what are your next goals and steps as a, as a writer? Wow. I mean, that's something like I've had this asked like a few times and you have to sort of take a minute to think about it. I mean, first and foremost, like Reynolds City as a story, I want to finish. So Reynolds City Chronicles will consist of nine issues. That is my plan. I'm going to stick with it. It's kind of difficult because I had like this conversation with someone on DeviantArt. It's like, oh, what about this thing? And you have to sort of say to them, well, if you want to do a fan thing on that, that's awesome. But we have a game plan for this. <laughs> for better or worse, we didn't get to finish it last time with like the original webcomic, which... I mean, I still stand by it. I think there's some absolutely exceptional issues like the one I just showed you. For me, I just, I want this to be something that you could go into a shop or like you said, go on Kofi and you can have the whole thing. You could binge read Reynard City Chronicles in one go if you wanted to. Like, I want to get to that point. And then after that, what would be absolutely incredible? One thing that inspired me, actually, there's been a couple actually. So I'm going to One Life Left uh, Gaming Con in April and there's like a group there called Super Happy Kill Time. 
they're doing like their own online show, which is brilliant. And then you've got Team Season 3. They're doing like a fan-made Season 3 of Sonic Saturday AM. And it's like, we could make this happen as much as it would be incredible to have, say, a Netflix show in the style of something like Sonic Prime, which, you know, I'm really enjoying, or Cuphead or she or whatever. If you could do the equivalent and like do an online show, I'd be really up for that. Like if someone wanted to sort of help us on the animation side, if, you know, we've got voice actors, we've got artists, we've got quite a few elements that could work with this but I think to sort of do it on the level that I'd want to do it I think this is something that you know we've tried to do in the past but I think it needs something else and arguably it needs more levels than what I can do on my own Mm -hmm. if that makes sense unless you had a background in animation or a background in producing live action you need help and you need the proper experts and people that have experience in those fields obviously you still have a proof of concept with years of comics as well as years of content from voice actors and everything like that so it's not like you couldn't even just stop motion or voice over on the comics themselves and showcase that to a studio or to whatever saying hey look here's already an established product here's stuff that i've been putting together for x amount of years here's my fan base that have followed me religiously and have supported me all this time you have a following available but let's do something make a deal and take advantage of it Exactly. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, again, this is something I could tell you years and years ago. Strangely enough, I was watching the box set of the original Life on Mars, which I, I absolutely love. I think it's an incredible show. And I was looking at the background of how it got made and all, all they went through. And I kind of thought to myself, like, it was such a oddball show, 70s time travel head mess show. And so I, I tried like, a contact I know to kind of like work as a representative. And it got to the point where Kudos, the people that made Life on Mars, they read the scripts that I'd written, like, like I said, and this was before we had any of like the stuff that you just mentioned, this is before that beyond the realms of possibility that's the thing like i think beforehand we tried to do something like this and i think it was too soon i think if we get the comic finished and i think for me that has got to be the main thing and not to sort of do it with an animated series in mind to do the comic as best as we possibly can mm-hmm. but then after that maybe i think first and foremost once the series is done have a breather for a second would be the thing for me we made this thing and we can stop we can like sort of stop for a second and then like after that, start thinking about how you would do that and who you approach and who would want to do it. I think this is the thing. I think it'd be very important to have people that sort of get what you're trying to do equally. If you're adapting something, it's not necessarily going to be the same thing, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. For example, like, I really liked how like when you see like the making of it, say something like Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. But like Brian Lee O'Malley was clearly like sort of working closely with Edgar Wright. And you see that in the finished film, like even though the finished film isn't one-to-one with the comics, there's enough of the spirit that you sort of see what you're going for. And I do think energy that comes from that is great. Or say, for example, like Wes Anderson doing Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's yeah. like, it's different from the Royal Bell book, but there's like kind of energy that he brings to it and that aesthetic and that quality. And I would love it if you could get someone who would have that vision and energy. For example, I was watching like clips of, it was the Golden Globes or something, and uh, this is terrible because I've forgotten his name, but the director of RRR was saying how he'd love to do a Marvel film. I was like, I've watched that film and I absolutely love it. And that kind of energy matched with us would be absolutely wonderful. Have you seen that, by the way? Which one? Um, RRR, it's like an Indian action drama. No. Oh, it's incredible. It's also, strange enough, got one of the best dance-off scenes in the film. Oh, is, is it a better dance-off scene than uh, Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse? Ooh. Or Flashdance? It's up there. Oh, okay. I don't want to spoil it, but they do things that you just don't see coming. <laughs> The action is just, it involves stuff where you just think, this is face-off Nicolas Cage levels of over the top, yet it still works and there's still drama and there's still, oh, and it's like, it's three hours long, but it didn't feel it for me. I really enjoyed it. Well, I think it's doing rounds at the award season in the minute, but it's doing so for a reason. It's, it's so energetic and crazy, but also it's got soul to it as well. And to be honest, like, there's this whole thing. Some like English people are like, oh, they make, they make the English people villains. It's like they're over the top comic book villains. Like, and the, the grievances are kind of balanced. So it's like, to be honest, I could just kind of compartmentalize that. It's just like, I don't care. This is awesome. To quote Eddie Izzard, the British stole the the world with a cunning use of flags so i mean yes. oh i i love i love that oh man 
That's so good. Oh, that whole routine. Yeah. We definitely have similar humor, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Have you ever seen Reeves and Mortimer? No, I don't think so. I'll have to find a clip for you. Yeah. If you like sort of surreal, off the wall humor, they're much more well known in the UK, but like I kind of grew up with them. And Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer have been doing these like shows for like 25 years. They've done like sketches, sitcoms, all kinds of stuff. I remember once I went to a recording and I completely fanboyed in front of them. So I wanted to talk to him because he was like, as I say, he's my comedy hero. And I think the word that came out of my mouth, like, yeah, I come in here. <laughs> I mean, I still managed to like shake his hand and like get a picture with him. So like, the picture you can see me with him, but like the poor guy, like obviously was like, who's the hero? You absolute, you absolute mental. <laughs> and oh my gosh, like, like I say, we so we went with my friend Dan, and we sort of went to this recording, and he before that they start recording, he sort of goes up to us like, I'm probably wondering why you're all here. One of you is a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you one of the sketches. Yeah. You'll see what I mean. It's interesting because like some like American people I show it to and it's like, oh, wow, this is amazing. I really like it. And then one person I showed it to on Twitter and they were like, that's two minutes of my life. I'm not getting back. So we'll see. It's very Marmite. And I think even with, with like English people, like it's very Marmite. With the, <laughs> that's totally fair enough. I was raised on, on a lot of British comedy and, and like Monty Python, Faulty Towers, uh, obviously – Life of Brian, uh, Mel Brooks's like movies and Blazing Saddles and History of the World and all that, and a lot of British comedies as well too. Because my, my dad showing me a lot of that stuff. So there's a lot of comedy duos that I can remember from the '90s and 2000s. I can't think of their names, but they had some hilarious sketches. So I'm wondering if if they're the, possibly the same people you're speaking of. Um, I hope so. I think I think like I say, if if, if, if it is what I think. Then fingers crossed, some of it is. Yeah. Since we last talked, obviously things are starting to get back to some semblance of whatever is normal in these times. Com conventions are coming back. There's a lot of wonderful, talented people that are showcasing their work and their talents. The UK has a ton of great com conventions, which I still want to visit at least one once in my lifetime, just because. What are your future goals and plans for this year until we speak the next time? <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, sort of tying it in with events, for me personally, I am incredibly biased, but I do genuinely think this. So in September, there's going to be Norcom, which I go to every year, which is like the Norwich Sci-Fi Con. And that takes place in the Royal Norfolk Showground, just outside the city. And that's a really nice one. It's very friendly, very relaxed, because it's like just outside the city. Like you can go outside for your lunch break and have a breather. And I love that. In April, I'm going to be at One Life Left, which is a gaming convention. I was there, like they did the first one of that last year and same location. A lot of fun, really cool people. In terms of comic stuff, so obviously we're, we're going to be promoting Alternatron like over the next like week or so. In the meantime, we've got people working on issue six. And what I can tell you with that is it's going to have the same multi-story format as we have with issue five. But the thing is with issue six, the two side stories with this one tie in more directly with the main story. So what I'm also going to say, and I'm going to try and say this as cautiously as I can, but there is a big story with issue six and it kind of sets things in motion for the final arc of the final issues. Can you tease it at least? Okay, so for people who've like read, read the end of issue five, you they will have already known this. So in effect, it kind of ended with Guillermo, who's, who's going to have like this confrontation with Megafox and issue six is going to carry on from there. But there's also kind of side stories involved with that, including like a new character that was briefly glimpsed at the end of issue five. There's going to be more fleshing out of that character. There's also twists and turns involved with other characters. People who have been mentioned in Rain City Chronicles, but people who've read the original web comics will know these characters more. So Warp King has got more of a role to play in this next issue. And, you know, let's to chop one down. And I really like him as a character. So for people who don't know, visually, he looks like a cross between Willy Wonka and the Terminator. Character-wise, I don't know, he's, he's a little bit of a con artist and he's a little bit sort of dodgy. So he's a bit sort of um, sort of Phil Silvers, a bit Del Boy, and it's kind of mixed in with this sort of cosmic power. It's an odd kind of contradiction and you're sort of like, okay, this weirdo is in charge of like the dimension between space and time. The side story in issue six kind of touches on his role and what he does in it. It might be a little bit more complex than people think. So a crazier version of Doctor Who. Yeah, there's, there's an element of, yeah, like, like that kind of slightly aloof, kind of I know better than everyone. 
like there's this grand plan that we can't possibly understand but like at the same time sort of someone who sort of falls over and sort of wears wacky trousers yeah well rob you know i do hate to say it but that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking i want to thank you so much not only for your support in all these years but also for coming back on the show i always have a blast chatting with you it's, it's so much fun and yeah thank you so much for having us on Kurt. and like before before we sort of end it i just want to say a massive massive thank you to like i say jed ellie emily you know all these wonderful sort of people joe nicholas sid like we do like a whole big like special thanks playlist on the youtube channel and the reason why is just you know you've got like Haley, aj um all the voice cast like all of these people who put so much work into it and i want to say sincerely like this project doesn't exist without like all of them like i'm talking here explaining my part of it but my part of it is like one part of this whole thing so thank you so much guys before i let you go where can we find you how can we support you and of course where can we find all the amazing work that you do with reynard city main website is reynardcitychronicles.com so that's where you'll find like blogs and updates kofi dot com forward slash Reynard City forward slash shop is where you can get digital and print versions of the comic and it's also available via Book Bugs and Dragon Tales, Canary Comics and Beckles Books. Like I said, we also have um, a YouTube channel. So if you, if you look up Reynard City Update channel on YouTube, that will come up. So we recently got over 300 subscribers on that. So that was awesome. If you go on those main ones and twitter.com slash Reynard City, like that will kind of keep you up to date on everything else. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. Of course, on our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website, because I'm still updating the website. There's some background issues. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. And after 14 years, the podcast is back. Two Geeks Talking podcast is back on Podbean, which is twogeekstalking.podbean.com. I already uploaded over 100 episodes from last year, and I'm currently uploading this year as well. And as time goes on, past years of this amazing show that started in 2008 are going to be uploaded as well there too. So there's a lot of historical references for 15 years of web comics and comics and entertainment. Big history lesson is coming your way either way. As I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.